Hey guys, it's Kyo here from Fire and Steel. Today I'm going to be showcasing all the one piece swords that are made out of carbon steel. So let's start and take a look at all of them. So the first sword we're gonna look at is Shusui, which is one of Zoro's swords. This is a pretty fun detailed sword. I like these little symbols that are happening. It's got the tie for it to be attached, this fun texture on the inside, and this is all this sort of shoelace type material. The guard is like almost a flower shape, which is pretty fun. And opening it up, it's this sort of pinky color on the inside that has, I don't know what design, I don't know how I would describe this design, but I guess it's sort of like bumpy or sharp edges on it. And it matches the colors of the outside of the sheath. So second sword is Sandai Kitetsu, another one of Zora's swords. I really love this design. It has more of this banding happening with this centerpiece being gold. The This is like a much more detailed looking sword. I like this end piece that's got some fun design on it. Lots of stuff going on <laughs> on the sheath. Opening it up, it has sort of almost like a dripping looking effect going on <laughs> with the way that the metal is painted. And for the guard, I really like how clean this design looks. So this sword, I like this design. I just like the simpler sort of design swords, but in the handle has a black and white coloring and obviously you can see that the sheath is a pretty plain design since it's just all white but it's got this rope again and on the inside oh, it's just kind of like a regular style there's no super intricate design on it but it looks very sleek this sword is also still one of Zoro's swords. It's the sword that he receives once he trades in one of his previous ones. This one has a pretty intricate looking design. I really like the wrapping on the sheath here, especially the details of the these little guys. <laughs> and the guard on it is this fun gold detailing, almost kind of looks like a clover. Opening it up, it has almost like a flame-like design on the inside that's yellow, so it's kind of matching all the gold detailing. Oh, let's close that. This is pretty much the sword we just looked at, but the black version, which is the one that you see in the manga, it's got the same detailing, just in sort of like this very slick black color. And on the inside, I really like the red detailing of the flames. This one's pretty cool looking. All right, so this is the last of Zoro's swords that we have. This is the Yubishiri, which is a sword that got disintegrated earlier in the series. It's, again, this sort of totally black, um, and gold coloring. I like that the cord on this one is a different design and opening it up, you can see it has this sort of wave or bump design on the inside, silver and black. The sheath has these metal details and then this end is also metal. And looking at the guard, it's this sort of square geometric design. This sword is the Nidai Kitetsu. This was a sword stolen by Luffy and it's got like a pretty fun design to it. Very whimsical almost because of the purple and the pink. Uh, you can see that the cords on this are purple which kind of matches the purple on the sheath. 
the guard is that sleek design that I think we've already seen before in one of them. And the inside is pretty simple. It's just this metal coloring, which is nice. The outside's definitely really detailed. I like this band in the middle with all the X, X's and more of these symbols. Moving on to our next character, we have Law's sword, which I like because it has this little fluffy guard on it, which is pretty unique. Uh, it has, again, this cord detailing. It's a little more unique because it has this gold in the center, these plus signs on the sheath with another one of these cords. This one's red and pulling it open. It's just a pretty standard design on the inside. So there we go. So now we have not really <laughs> in the average looking katana, but this is Brooks Kane. Uh, you can see it's just this purple design. It's pretty simple until you open it up. And there we have a very uniquely shaped sword on the inside. Um, the reason that this is a screw on type of uh, attachment for the sword is because they are not legal to have if we just had it like a pull open sword weapon. So this is a bit more for safety. All right, so last sword I have is Mihawk's sword, which you can see is absolutely huge in comparison to everything else we've looked at. Pulling out from the sheath, you can see the very cool sort of gemstone design it has. It's very big and it's very heavy. The uh, end of it has this very cool orb on it and honestly just the size of it is really cool and it's got sort of this white wrapping this material around the handle and obviously you can see the little details on all of it it's just pretty menacing looking <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. That's all the swords I have to show you from One Piece. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. And if you wanna check them out or any other swords, you can find us in the description or online at fireandsteel.ca. Bye.